You guys release A Worm's Life in 1996, three more singles, top 20 album. The album goes platinum in Canada, sells over a million copies worldwide, so the success continues. Uh, it was recorded in the Bahamas in the winter of 1995. Uh, is there any better place to be to record an album than in the Bahamas in the winter? You got to get out of the Winnipeg winters, correct? Yeah, there, there was more to that, uh, like being in the Bahamas. First of all, we were recording that with uh, Terry Manning was the engineer on that album. Terry w uh, was instrumental in a lot of uh, albums. Like, you know, he worked with Led Zeppelin. And and so we we thought, okay, here's someone who's going to bring something really different to the table. Um, luckily, we, you know, through, through the way that things work in the world, that studio uh, became available to us. And um, we were staying, so b behind the studio, um, Tina, uh, um, what's Tina's last name from the Talking Heads? Um, is it Tina Weymouth? Um, and and uh, so they their condos were behind the studio. And uh, so we, we stayed there for a little while. It was, it was just kind of, it just kind of, a neat place to be because wow we're staying in the same I, i'm staying in a house that belongs to a member of the talking heads and uh and then across the studio across the street uh robert palmer's house was there and uh, and i stayed in robert palmer's house and it was it was it was phenomenal i was just you know wow this is robert palmer's house and it, you know that it, it had a tv and a couch and a kitchenette like every other house but still Robert Palmer lived there and it was, it was a very, very cool thing. And um, while we were doing that, and, and the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is that in studio B, uh, Jimmy Buffett was, was recording uh, an album over there. Now, of course, you know, just as, as of recently. And so uh, Jimmy Buffett's engineer who has recorded most of his albums is a guy by the name of Rob Eaton, Robert Eaton. And, uh, and I, I was like, wow, this is really cool that, you know, you've worked with him for this long. And, and so we were working back to back. And then I find out that Rob is also the front of house guy and has been a studio guy for Pat Metheny for the last 25 years. Now I'm a huge Pat Metheny fan. And, and uh, so that conversation leads to us playing in New York and Pat was recording in Right Track Studios at the time. And Rob called me up and said, hey, Pat's in the studio. Do you want to come and, and, and hang out in the studio with us for the day? I was like, are you kidding? So, you know, off I go. And here I am in Right Track Studios. And, I've, and, I've, and I'm sitting on a piano bunch with Lyle Mays, which to me is, is, does life get better than this? And, you know, Pat's going over the music and everything else. Um, I tr all that stuff I attribute back to uh, the recording of, of, of A Worm's Life. Uh, it was a wonderful little studio, had a wonderful vibe. Uh, the, the availability, because we're in the Bahamas, uh, availability of, of equipment sometimes was uh, weird because uh, we needed guitars and we needed basses and all this kind of stuff that beyond our own that we just wanted to try just for different flavors and stuff like that. And um, the, the, the process of what we were trying to do uh, one song on that album, which is, you know, if you're going to call it a deep cut is a tune called driver's gestures, which is one of the tunes on the album and it's not to take anything away from anything else on the album. But for me, it's one of those tunes on the album where we just nailed it. It's the, every time I listen to that, I, it just feels like we couldn't, we couldn't have played that any better than, than, than what it was. And, and for, for me, as mentioned earlier, when we're on stage and we have that moment where like, it's not going to get better than this, this is, this is fantastic. That's an amazing feeling. So uh, that particular one, and of course, at that particular time, our A and R guy was shifting. So David Abendeth had left to go to I think Sony Records in the U.S. and uh, we had a new fella, and his name slips me right now, uh, but he was on the phone with us, you know, every day. And uh, and also keep in mind that for God shoveled his feet and for a Worm's Life, um, my role was not merely as drummer. Um, I, you know, we, I co-produced both those albums. Uh, so, I, you know, keyboard things, guitar things, uh, you know, programming sounds, yeah, programming soundscapes, um, we're, we're very in, integral. Um, if I, I'm just going to veer off just for a second, just so 
um, when we started working on God Shuffled His Feet, there's a tune in there called Two Nights and Maidens. And uh, Two Nights and Maidens is, so when we started talking about Two Nights and Maidens, you know, I sat down at the risk of everybody hammering me. And uh, and I, I said, okay, this is this is how I see this song, right? And, and you know, we're like we're in a desert and off in the desert, this is big, there's a there's a castle and uh and and so we're we're on like a drone or a run in a glider at that point in time and uh, you know and and as the glider approaches the castle there's it, it swells and when we fly over the castle and we see there's people in the castle that's when the first chord comes in and 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 the first you know uh first uh verse starts off and then the glider takes off out of it and comes round and then we, when we come in so every time we go to a verse or a course it gets bigger and bigger and bigger but it's because this this glider is coming in and uh you know and what do i perceive the landscape as being for me all of those songs are all they're all visual uh everything that i everything that i've contributed uh to, to crash test dummies apart from apart from drums is 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 visual is is what it does to my visual landscape of how all these songs work and uh, when we got into doing a worm's life, um, that the the that song that album wasn't as visual as the other albums were. They were more uh, more groove groove oriented, uh, you know, like sitting sitting in the pocket and less creating the the soundscape. Uh, but the place that we were in, which was really hot um, and really cool beaches and palm trees everywhere. Uh, really contributed to our mindset in terms of how we approach the music every day.